Hi, it's Rupert Hine here from Action Coach near Ken Ross, and I'm joined today by John Cox of Cox & Co. Welcome, John. Hi, Rupert. Thanks very much for having me. John, th- I really appreciate you joining me. So you've been you've been running Cox & Co for, what, 16 and three-quarter years or something along those lines? Oh, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't feel as long as that, but when you, when you put it that way, Robert, yes. Uh, we, are, we are just shy of 17 years. Um, I've, I've been doing what I do. Cox & Co hasn't been around for that length of time, but I've been doing what I do for just shy of 17 years, that's correct. So, so Cox & Co is more than just an estate and letting agency? Very much so, very much so. So how do you describe what you do? We Cox & Co is a, a property investment house in, in a lot of ways. Um, we are letting estate agents Letting agents, estate agents, mortgage brokers, and property investment specialists all under the one roof, a, a true turnkey service for property investors, landlords, anybody who essentially wants to buy, sell, rent, or invest in property, and we can assist them uh, under the one roof. So, fantastic idea. I mean, I'm <laughs> always talking to people about helping them to get to that, that point in their business journey where they can build sure. up that property portfolio and have that. Uh, recurring income. What what got you into it in the first place? Sure. So I'm a mortgage broker to trade. So that's when I started 17 years ago. My my background for, before that was professional rugby. Uh, I was a rugby player all my days. Only retiring four years ago. And um, I went professional at 18 and had a few years of dipping my toe into the professional game early 2000s. But I realized very really early that. I was never to become a BBC pundit for the rest of my days. So I decided, well, let's go build a business at the same time in the hope that, that uh, I can still build a business for myself and for my own future. Um, I decided to move into mortgage brokering at 23 years old. My father was a mortgage broker up in Aberdeen, and I basically wanted to do what he does. Uh, I just didn't want to work for him, which is, a, again... I have a brave idea at that point. I basically could see there was an opportunity in working in mortgages. So I set up my shop in Edinburgh and he had his business up in Aberdeen. Um, the best way to put it, Rupert, was um, I see a few different opportunities to get into property management and letting. So after a few years of buying my teeth or whatever you class that as, is building my, my book here in Edinburgh. My father was also dabbling with the idea of moving into property management and lettings in Aberdeen. And we came together one year and said, listen, how about we set up a separate business, uh, a letting agency um, between myself, you and my, my older brother at the time. And within a year, we had just over 100 properties in this letting business. That was a partnership between me, my brother and my father. Uh, at the same time, I had these two different mortgage brokerages running, one in Edinburgh, one in Aberdeen. Um, I always made the joke that it was becoming an HMRC's auditing dream that we had all these three different sort of areas all running up the east coast of Scotland. So... We eventually um, dragged my dad at the time kicking and screaming into this amalgamation of all three businesses and put the family name above the door. And that's where Cox & Co was born. So um, 10 years ago was when Cox & Co itself was born. Um, what primarily at the time was a, mo- a master mortgage brokerage that was directly authorised, which meant we have access to every last bank, build society and mortgage lender across the UK. And at the same time, we were offering a a letting and property management proposition up the east coast of Scotland. Um, both ran really well together. It was it was really good fun to begin with. Um, but I slowly but surely realised that a lot of clients knew us for one or the other. They didn't know us for both. Um, and <clears throat> as the teams grew, I had a very, very strong team of mortgage brokers working for me, a very good team of um, letting agents in the house working for me. And I realised pretty quickly that actually I was spending a lot of my time not doing mortgages or lettings. I was actually um, building building dreams. I was packaging up deals. I was selling my clients' properties for them. I was um, sourcing new uh, letting opportunities for them. I was off working on the next commercial venture. I was basically doing everything else other than actually what our two main brand propositions were. Um, and it was through working with uh, business coaches at the time that opened my eyes to realize that oh, hold on we've actually got a bit of a niche for ourselves and when we delved into the detail of what Cox & Co was able to offer 
this is where the real value add came from, Rupert. It very much was a, an idea that I've taken a number of years to master, but I've now coined property investment management. And this is what Cox & Co's brand proposition really is. It's a case of working with landlords, uh, investors, um, locally, nationally, and globally, who are looking to invest in bricks and mortar across the central belt of Scotland. We would source the properties for them, um, arrange any required finance and insurances, package it all up, you know, nice big bow at the end. And then when they complete, we would take on those properties and manage them for them, offering a, a true turnkey service for property investors. Um, I suppose that's kind of where we are now, Cox & Co, uh, is exactly that. We are stockbrokers for bricks and mortar. Um, but that being said, I should stress that we'll quite happily still look after that one-off first-time buyer that comes through the door. Or uh, take on that one-off landlord that's sick to death of the big agency along the road and they, they want to get a bit more of a bespoke service. Um, and with that, again, the wee intricacies of a quick refinance of a buy-to-let property or a a bit of landlord insurance, you name it, we'll, we'll, we'll happily do the single transaction work. But our, our main meat, shall we say, our um, long-term uh, relationship clients are looking to invest their funds through Cox & Co. Fantastic. So, I mean, that's that's a really, really interesting journey you've been on. You talked about building up the team around you. Sure. So what, what are the things that you look for in that team, you've got a pretty, pretty tight proposition for your clients. You're offering a, you know, end-to-end -end service, high-end service. So, what do you need in the people you employ? Sure. So, I've always been a great believer. Again, I've, for anybody else that's aware of my story or have, or have heard me speaking at other events or other any of my sort of um, online content, I run I run the company in a lot of ways like I used to run rugby teams. I, I, I class myself as a captain, not the coach. And I, I, you need people that fit different positions to make the whole thing work. And um, we've got a number of different animals here at Cox & Co. But the one thing we do have is a group of property professionals. We're 14 in the team now. But that varies um, from letting agents, mortgage advisors, um, estate agents, uh, right down to people who've got a real penchant for just property investment that have joined me as well. I think the big one is the, the, everybody here are long-term um, property professionals. I've got no trainees, no part-time members of staff. Everyone is quite long in the tooth. We've all been in the game for a long time. At one point, I was the second youngest in the whole company. And um, it's not about age, of course. It comes down to experience. Um, the, the idea for me was bringing in people that can not just... Um, excel in their chosen area or field, but they can collaborate really well with everyone else in house. So as the team leader, if you will, what I spend a lot of my time doing is running these collaboration meetings and training my letting agents in the arts of property investment, training my mortgage advisors in the arts of selling property, and training my investment team on both sides so they understand how to build out return on investment spreadsheets correctly for landlords. Um, the, the key the key is this, I don't want to give away too many of my secrets, Rupert, but letting, letting agents, uh, the standard traditional letting of property and property management is dying. It's dying a death. Um, there's more and more regulation coming into the property market, and a lot of that's being drip-fed into letting the, the property market from the financial market. So I'm very, I know myself, I'm very, very lucky that I have got to 20 years experience in both, and very few other people have that. I am that niche, God forbid, if I go get hit by a bus tomorrow, because the key man cover insurance on that would cost a bloody fortune because I cover all area of the business. Um, but I spend a lot of my time training and trying to inspire the rest of my team and, and get them understanding all areas. Um, yes, you come to work wearing your letting agent hat, but you've also got to wear your Cox & Co hat above that and being able to um, fact find correctly, meet with our clients and get a proper um, holistic understanding of their needs. So when I go back to what I said about property management is dying, Property management needs to change to property investment management. Letting agents out there manage thousands and thousands of properties across the private rental sector in the country. And I, I would comfortably follow my own sword on this one, but I, I'm, I'm convinced that 99% of those letting agents haven't got a blooming clue about the value of those assets that they manage. They've got no understanding of the value of the client's wealth that's tied up within those properties. And Cox & Co, again, very arrogantly for a Monday afternoon, 
Um, I think we are the only letting agent that knows the actual value of our whole portfolio. And not only that, I know the value of the client wealth that's under management. So we report to our clients on an annual basis based on their wealth that's tied up in the bricks and mortar that we manage, opposed to, hey, your pool card's broken in your bathroom at 17 quid plus VAT um, at the end of a month. I think the other way to explain it without going into too much of a rant is the game needs to change from being reactive to proactive. Um, being an owner of a letting agency, I fell foul of this a decade ago when the phone would ring, everyone would hide under their desks because no one wanted to work for that 10% management fee. If the phone rang, it meant you had to go work for your management fee. And I was adamant to change that in the marketplace and say, listen, when the phone rings, let's jump because that's going to help that asset grow. Let's get ahead of the game. Let's go out there where we're inspecting our properties and meeting our tenants. Let's see where the value add is for our landlord investors to help those properties hit their capital appreciation goals that we'd set for them. Yeah. So, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm going off on one, but it's because I, 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 I'm, I'm extremely passionate about trying to implement some change in the private rental sector. I think it's, it's desperately in need of it. I, I, I'd agree with you. I mean, it's well, earlier this week, I was um, seeing in the news... Up, up in Perth, one of the big letting agents is in serious trouble for not having looked after the assets of um, their their clients. Sure, yeah. And yeah, no no industry <laughs> needs people like that in them. Um, it, gives, it gives us all a bad name. Um, yeah, I, I talk about Google re reviews a lot, and I, I openly ask people to go and read Cox and Co's Google reviews. We've got almost 100 Google reviews now, of which I think 90 odd of them are all satisfied clients. And the only bad re reviews we have are from disgruntled tenants or from um, prospective tenants that never got the property in the first place. And it's because letting agents, we're, we're normally the ones getting arrow shot at us. It's, yeah. you know, it's never the service that, that gets the bad review. It's just the name in general, being a letting agent. And I'm desperate to get that to change. You know, we, we should be held in as much high regard as that person is going to sell your house. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, still in 2023, we're, we're still dealing with bad press and, you know, this whole slumdog landlords and agents just steal money and, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's a nonsense. If people, you know, I wish people would realise there's a lot of really good letting agents out there that are working blooming hard to make change. And I I really want to try and promote ourselves with being one of the leaders of that. Yeah. So you've, you've built a pretty awesome setup over the last... 10 years since you branded as Cox & Co. So what do the next five years hold? World domination, Rupert. World <laughs> domination. <clears throat> they, 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 to strip it all down, and for me to keep talking like it's some sort of William Wallace Braveheart speech here, it, they get the, the formalities, the business end of it. The company is built upon four pillars. We have our lettings, our sales, our mortgages, and our investment side. So there's the four pillars of the business. And really now that we've kind of built that these four pillars out the key now is it's all about growth in each of those areas so where do i want to be over the next five years i want to double my lettings portfolio and um, i want to build my sales proposition to become national not just across the central belt but i'm looking to grow the sales proposition out and um, as quickly and aggressively as i possibly can and um, from a mortgage perspective our brokering side has been also been running the longest and um, i feel that that area of the market financial markets mortgages has been really difficult in the last 12 to 18 months and um, we're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel and i suppose for me at the moment it's more short-term goals for the mortgage brokering side i want us to be hitting the same volume that we were hitting pre-covid and um, that's that is the aim so i've got a wonderful close-knit team of mortgage gurus here in the office and i'm desperate to get them back up to the same level of targets they had 2018 2019 and um, from the investment side, the, the final sort of the four pillars there is just to get um, consumer confidence back. So I believe we were doing very, very well um, pre-COVID, during COVID, and in the last 12 months, it's died a death because interest rates are just were too high. Additional dwelling supplement jumping up last year um, to, to 6% obviously really affected the investment market here in Scotland. And I think consumer confidence has been the issue. And I think we're finally starting to see that grow. So into next year, my hope is to roll out our investment piece to a number of our competitors and offer it an almost a white labeling type service to assist them with their own growth at the same time. So four different areas of, of uh, growth for the next five years. And it's hard to kind of keep on top of them all. But I've got a wonderful team here. It's going to keep me in line at the same time, hopefully. 
Fantastic. So just 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 as we just as we close, if you think back over the last 16, 17 years, and you you had the opportunity to give your 18-year-old self some advice when you were just setting out, what would it be? My goodness. Don't give second and third chances. Um be more ruthless. I've, I am too nice a guy, Rupert, in business. I have been in the past. Not to say that I'm not a nice guy anymore, um, but I think when it comes down to staffing and when it comes down to contractors that work, you know, Cox and Co. Sorry, to, it's a bit of an elongated answer. I hope you don't mind, Rupert. But the Co. in Cox and Co. is not Cox and Company. Cox and Co. The Co. from a branding element was all about everyone else around the Cox family. Um, the contractors, our clients, our staff, everybody else was the code that made COG turn, if you will. And I feel that from far too young an age, I let too many people be part of that, that code. So we had a number of we had contractors, but too many, and some were pretty, pretty poor initially. Um, I had a lot of bad clients, bad landlords that I played, allowed them to get away with far too much. Um, but a lot of tire kicker clients on the investment side who would talk a great game but never end up actually investing. So from a viability standpoint, a lot of man hours was wasted um, and so on and so on. And then with, from a staffing perspective, uh, allowing um, people to join the team in the hope that they would get better and then wasting a lot of time realising that they wouldn't. Hence why I'm quite stringent now with the team that I take on. They've got to bring a, the right level of experience from day one. So the first bit of advice we is, you don't need to give second or third ch chances in business. Get people on board. You sign a contract between yourselves, and if it doesn't work, then you move on swiftly on to the next one. And um, I will go to my grave on that one. I think it's very, very important to make sure that you've got the right people around you at all times. And as soon as something starts to slip, then let's move on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, that's awesome advice. It's, it's the old thing of um, it's not selfish to be selfish. Yeah, yeah. I've had my. I'm too nice, Rupert. Believe me, I'm too nice. I've been too nice to too many people over the years, and I feel we could have kicked on and probably been double the size by now if I'd realised that five, six years ago. But I was too much enjoying that first peak in a business, business growth. You're making a bit of cash. You buy that nice house. My first child's born. Everything's going great. You get the nice car. Everything's going smooth. So you don't worry about those few wee issues that's going on in the background because you're living on that period whereby everything's you know that business euphoria that first peak of business euphoria people talk about and if I had got my feet back on the ground early enough I probably would have kicked on even faster so that's one bit of advice I'd always go back to is keep your feet on the ground and um, like I said one chance and then and then move on fantastic brilliant John look thank you so much for that that's been uh, it's been really really useful Oh, pleasure. Goodness, it's, it's flown in, absolutely flown in. Uh, <laughs> I really appreciate uh, the opportunity for a chat. I really hope it's some good content for, for your viewers. And um, I hope they get a chance to speak to you all again soon. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rupert. Okay, take care.